So this is a 2007 Lincoln MKX, also known as a Ford Edge. And one thing about these and a lot of other front wheel drive vehicles is there is no changeable, uh, user changeable, serviceable, or even dealer serviceable transmission filter. Uh, to do it, you've got to pull either the engine or the transaxle, split the housing apart. They can claim filled for life all they want, but we all know that's not going to that's not going to fly if you want any kind of longevity. So we do have a dipstick and it runs down through a fill tube right to down there into the transaxle assembly. And you might think that maybe you could get a suction hose uh, if you've got a vacuum extractor or fluid extractor and suck the fluid out uh, to do a partial change. Uh, it's actually a little easier than that if you can get up underneath the thing there actually is a drain plug. So if you come from the front of the vehicle on the driver's side and come right up under, we can see the transaxle assembly right here. There's our drain plug at the very bottom of it. So lowest point on the transaxle right there. Uh, you can get to it and you can drain it. Now versus engine oil where you have a published, you know, some manufacturers public transmission capacity. Um, you know, at least on the full size. Ford was really bad about not publishing. Well, it could be this, it could be that. Uh, but on engine oil, pretty well everybody does, right? So we know five and a half quarts here. So if I change the oil, as I just did, I know to put five and a half quarts back. But on the transmission, it's a little trickier. So painter's buckets readily available uh, at any home store. And I think Walmart probably even has them. They're graduated pretty well. Uh, if nothing else, you could take a plain bucket in the kitchen, you know, a little two or two and a half gallon bucket would be plenty, and mark yourself off some graduations by measuring out. Uh, just take a, a Sharpie or a marks -a lot or whatever you prefer, paint pen. Anyway, you can measure how much you drain out and you know how much to put back in. Uh, a couple of quick thoughts though. Newer transmission fluids uh, expand a lot more when they're warm. Uh, this is Mercon V. Not 5, but V. Uh, LV is even worse. That's the newer than this fluid. Uh, I'm not sure what year they phased it in, depending on transmission and transaxle over a period of years. But it expands a whole lot worse than this does, and this expands a whole lot more than the old Dex Merc does. So if you pull it in hot, and it looks like you've drained a full gallon, and you put in cold, if you put in a full gallon of cold, by the time that warms up, you could be at 6 quarts, a gallon and a half. So you want to make sure it's essentially a cool engine, cool transaxle, cool transmission. Make sure you get an accurate measurement. Uh, as far as how often you ought to do it, well, it varies a whole lot, right, depending on driving conditions. Uh, if you do it every 30 to 40,000 miles, you know, you probably ought to get 200 pretty easy out of this transaxle. If you don't do it ever, you'll be lucky to get, you know, 100 and a quarter. But again, on that note, it depends on what your driving conditions are, are like. If you're doing Uber, or using it as a taxi, or a lot of stop and go, dropping kids, uh, school, staying around town, short drives, those things are all much harder on it. Um, the stop and go, accelerating, decelerating, right, the shifts are where you build heat in the transmission and heat up the fluid. It's where you create shear in the fluid, which breaks it down, in addition to the heat. So that is really tough on fluids. So before I start, I am going to sanity check the transmission. That is, I've never seen a leak, but just in case it's low, uh, I want to make sure when I'm adding back, I don't add back too little. But we're, yeah, lower into the crosshairs there, if you can see that at all on camera, or if I'm even getting it into the, the field, I am. Okay. So, sanity check, we're not horribly low on fluid, uh, so we're not going to end up horribly low if I hit that same mark. It's true to Ford form, it's a goofy... 11 millimeter, not a real common size, right? A 10 or a 13 you would think would be a little more reasonable. Fine thread, pipe plug. Uh, the head looks like it's magnetic. I have not tested it on anything. It does not appear to be magnetic. Okay, so it's a plain old plug. Uh, but it is a fine thread metric with an 11 millimeter head. So I'm just darn near spot on a gallon. Just right on a gallon, four quarts. So, as it turns out, uh, I was thinking it was somewhere around there. I didn't have it written down, and I should have. Um, but I bought four quarts, so <laughs> we're good. All right, so filling it, uh, you know, no need to film that. About like you'd do with oil, other than the hole's a little bit smaller. It does have to run down that tube, so pour slow so it's not belching out. 
uh, obviously the plugs back in and and in snug but not cranked down like you're trying to break it off right like wrist tight to forearm tight not elbow tight not shoulder tight uh, it's a little bitty thing you don't need to break it off it's going into uh, aluminum or chinesium or cast magnesium i don't know uh, probably cast magnesium uh, that's a big thing with ford but could be chinesium anyway uh, a clean funnel you don't want contaminants uh, added in there uh, obviously good fluid uh, make sure it meets the spec that's the big thing so look at your particular vehicle check the manual uh, if you put the wrong thing in these modern transmissions it will ruin them in short order all right well that's about all i got so that's the location right just straight down underneath on the path or on the driver's side right up under you can't miss it bottom of transaxle a uh, little 11 millimeter head on on this one and i assume they probably kept it the same way for a few years uh, cannot miss it make sure it's cool so that you're not measuring uh, it's expanded volume size uh, so you get an accurate measurement for how much to put back in and that's about all there is to it <laughs> make sure you remember to add it back before you drive off in it because that will uh, with anything ruin it quicker than you can imagine all right thanks for watching so i went to all that effort talking about uh, filling slowly and carefully so it doesn't belch out and what did i do uh, got in a rush <laughs> and belched out on the first bottle uh, and it is worse when you first start, right, because you've got fluid going further down and displacing air from further down uh, and in smaller passages so it, where it really gets trapped and there's big pockets. Anyway, yeah, I did that. Um, another thing I guess uh, would be worth mentioning is how do you dispose of the old fluid? You know, um, find your nearest state park or nature preserve and just take it out there and dump it with the ducks. Um, it makes a good nesting material for them. No, I'm, I'm totally kidding. Um, you know, that, that's a tough thing with transmission fluid. Uh, any of the auto parts stores or Walmart even will take back used oil because they can sell it and make money, right? Uh, oil recyclers pay good money for it. Uh, transmission fluid can be recycled, but it's lower volume, so most of those places don't want to mess with it and have a separate tank. Because of the gravity difference between them, they have to be separated uh, in, in the refining process so best thing is take it to every big city has a municipal uh, hazardous waste disposal and they collect oil and transmission fluid um, anywhere that I've ever lived and they actually get enough volume there that they can recycle it um, you might be able to get a quick lube place to take it but then they're just going to look at you and say, well, why didn't you bring it into us for service? They're making money. They're getting paid by the recycler for the privilege of picking it up. Uh, it is worth more than the transport cost. It's just a matter of whether they want to uh, do you that favor if you didn't go to them to have them do the work. So your uh, municipal hazardous waste is probably the easiest, best place to take it. 